Hello, I'm Jeff Powers, Senior Writer with Real-Time Fantasy Sports, and welcome to another edition of the Real-Time Fantasy Sports Show. We are doing our position preview series here at Real-Time Fantasy Sports. I've been having on a lot of our top players help me preview each position for the coming season. I thought it would be fitting to bring in Howard Bender for this week's show of the tight end preview. Howard is back here at Real-Time Fantasy Sports, and we could not be more excited he is going to be contributing content throughout the season, doing videos with me, content on the web uh, website as well, where you can read all his great stuff to help you get ready for all of your games every week. So, Howard, I appreciate you joining me here for the tight end preview. Great to have you back here at Real Time Fantasy Sports. I am so stoked about being back here with you guys at RT Sports. I'm so excited about it. Um, I, uh, I'm, I'm ready. Like, and when you hit me up and you were like, let's talk tight ends, you know, that's my wheelhouse, baby. So <laughs> I'm ready, man. I am ready. How are you, Jeff? I'm doing well. It's, it's great to have you on. It's great to have you back on the site. Uh, like I mentioned, we could not be more excited. Should be a lot of fun. We'll be doing videos like this throughout the season. So help everybody get ready for all their games. And, and like you mentioned, you're the tight end whisperer, Howard. So it's only fitting to have you do this position. Uh, preview with me today i really appreciate it oh my pleasure man it's been it's it and i'll tell you what man if there's a year for tight end this is the year of the tight end i'm telling you we're gonna have a blast and uh and everybody out there watching is gonna get some really really rock solid insights into this position exactly so let's just get into that so before we get into specific players and whatnot let's just talk about how you approach the position come draft day i know it kind of depends on where you're picking but when you're going into a draft and you're drafting the tight end spot, what what's your strategy? So it actually doesn't matter what position I'm in. My goal in any draft that I do is I want to come away with a top five tight end. Okay, like that. I mean, I, I'm I'm having a lot of difficulty not ranking Dalton Kincaid number one overall because I think he's just going to absolutely smash. But Kelsey Kincaid. Uh, Mark Andrews obviously is a, is, is a huge target. Trey McBride, what he did last year. Um, I mean, that's absolutely spectacular. Uh, and then you're also talking about who, who, who am I missing? Kincaid, Kelsey, McBride. You got Andrews. Laporta. Laporta. Oh, you know what it is? <laughs> I, it's so, that's so funny. You know what it is? Because as much as I love Laporta, I don't have him ranked as highly as everybody. You know, you see in the ADP, people are taking Sam Laporta as like the, you know, the, the in the second round, late second round, early third round. And I'm like, that's just too high, especially if they're going to expand Jameson Williams' uh, route tree. Uh, mm -hmm. They're going to lean on Amon Ra. They're going to utilize Jameer Gibbs. They, they've slowly, you know, increased his passing work. So, you know, I'm a little, I'm, I'm pulling back a little bit on Laporta. He's still a top five tight end for me, mm -hmm. but you know, he's, he's not my, he's not my number one and he's not my number two. Um, and then, you know what, I, I'll even say this out of that top five, the upside and the potential of what we could be seeing from Kyle Pitts might put him into that tier. I'm not there yet, but I'm walking away from any draft right now with a top five tight end. And, uh, and if I'm playing in something like the fantasy championships and in, in, in a, in a large field tournament type type thing, then I'm trying to, Kyler Murray and Trey McBride together. I'm trying to do the Mark Andrews, Lamar Jackson thing together. Uh, Mahomes and Kelsey. Like that's, that's where I'm working at. Uh, Cause these guys, I mean, this top five group of tight ends, they're just, they're outstanding right now. I agree. And I love that strategy of pairing those tight ends uh, with a quarterback in the fantasy championship. I think it just makes a lot of sense, especially when you're playing at the end and you're in the playoffs, you need to maximize your points somehow. And I think that's a great way to do it. I like the top five tight ends too, but I don't know if I can pay the price tag for Kelsey, Laporta, and McBride. So if I'm getting, I love Kincaid. That's my guy. So if I can get him in the fifth round, uh, I, I'm loving that. Even Andrews, I feel like he falls a little later than those top mm -hmm. guys as well. So if I'm going to get one, that's who I want because I think I like that price tag just a tad better. But I'm also good with going and platooning guys in the middle rounds like Najoku, uh, guys like that, Ingram as well, because I feel like tight ends a little deeper than it has been in recent years as well. Like usually it used to be so, so top heavy. I mean, it would fall off a cliff, I felt like, but I still feel like there's some value to be had a little later. But if I'm going to go top five, I, I like that. I, I'm good with that, Howard, but I think I feel better if I'm getting Kincaid 
uh, or Andrews if I'm going to go that route. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm in that same boat. Like if you guys are going to give me Dalton Kincaid as the fifth tight end off the board. Yeah. Like that, that's a no brainer for me. Um, like I said, the price on Laporte is too high. Kelsey Kelsey's, you know, I mean, people are, are, you know, they're, they're not reaching for him like they used to. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's, it's kind of intriguing, you know, on that front, you know, Engram, you bring up, and I, I like Engram a lot, and I think he's a PPR monster, and they're going to continue uh, that front with him. Uh, Najoku's a guy who I might be a little bit on the outs with um, after after shouting his name from the mountaintops over the last two <laughs> seasons. Yeah. Let, well, so let's talk about some targets. I think you already mentioned maybe one that you like. I think we're on the same page here. Mm -hmm. uh, but guys that you're looking at that you're going in the draft and you kind of want to get maybe one or two of these guys on your roster, who, who, who are you looking at? Direct targets. Again, like I said, if I don't come away, if I don't come away with a top five tight end, if I mm -hmm. or top six, if we want to include pits, then more often than not, I'm waiting until further down the list. Um, you know, and I'm looking at, uh, you know, later round guys like Hunter Henry, uh, for example, and I guess, you know, we can kind of tie in, you know, targets versus fades here in that realm, because like Najoku is a guy who I'm kind of off on right now, but Henry's a guy who I'm on right now. And I've, I've, I've got shares of Henry galore, um, right now, because, you know, Alex Van Pelt goes from Cleveland to new England. And if you guys watched what was going on, uh, you know, in Cleveland, you know, you had Amari Cooper, but you really didn't have a, a you know, a real trustworthy receiving core. Donovan mm -hmm. Peoples Jones, you know, <laughs> you know, and Elijah Moore last year. And so what Van Pelt did was he he tweaked his system and he adjusted his game plan to incorporate the tight end as a stronger pass catching option, which is why you saw Najoku pop so much. You know, he's getting those sideline, uh, sideline targets. He was running the seam route. He was running some drag routes there. So you were seeing a lot of great stuff out of Najoku with Van Pelt as that, you know, as that coordinator. Now you turn around, you got Ken Dorsey who's in there. You've also increased the number of, uh, of, of wide receivers by adding Jerry Judy to the mix. Um, and so that's like there in Cleveland, but you look at new England and you're like, okay, well, who is the number one receiver? Yeah. I, I don't know. It's a mess. So Van Pelt is easily going to turn to Hunter Henry, who is a strong pass catcher. He's a good wide body red zone target there as well. And I think he steps up in a major way because we don't know about Jalen Polk. We don't know about Demario Douglas. We don't know about Javon Baker. And I'm sorry, but Kendrick Bourne, that, that's not a wide receiver one. So I think Henry really pops. So if I'm not going after that top tight end guy there, then chances are is, um, you know, maybe I'll get like a splash of Evan Engram. Maybe I'll look to like a, I don't know, like a Dallas Goddard type thing because I like Kellen Moore's system and what he does for the tight end position there. But other than that, man, I'm like, I'm pulling down uh, Hunter Henry and I don't know, you, you want some really deep sleepers? I can get you those too. <laughs> we'll do that a little later. We'll tease sure. that, Howard. So my target, we already mentioned, I love Kincaid. That's the guy I'm all in on. His ADP is 53 and his numbers got skewed a little bit too. He scored just two times last year and he was still 11th in fantasy tight end scoring. So we kind of talked about, you talked about new England, not having any pass catchers. Buffalo is kind of scary the same way. In my opinion, you know, Curtis Samuel, Keon Coleman, it just <laughs> falls off a cliff. So I think Kincaid, I really think he could get hundred plus receptions. And yes. I'm like you, I would not be surprised if he does not lead all of tight ends in fantasy scoring. It would not be a surprise at all. So we're all in on Kincaid. Another guy kind of like you, a little, little later, Dalton Schultz is one guy that kind of intrigues me. Mm -hmm. Not flashy, but consistent. 16th tight end off the board right now is ADP, super cheap. I just think for his price tag, he was 10th overall fantasy tight end scoring last year. I know Stefan Diggs is there now, but he's going to be consistent in offense. He has at least 57 catches, four straight seasons as well. So he's a guy I think he can get really cheap. Uh, I, I don't know if his ceiling's quite as high as maybe – Hunter Henry, uh, kind of for the reasons you mentioned, but still, I just think he's super cheap. And if I get him as a number two, I'm happy with Schultz. And I think he could be a good platoon guy 
for this year. So talked about targets. Let's talk about fades. You kind of mentioned a couple already, but anybody out there, you just you're out on. You don't want any part of. Uh, if you can give me give me a couple. Of oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, just to to wrap up the Dalton Schultz hype because I love him too. I think you know as far as like stability goes, high mm-hmm. floor tight end. I think it's a great situation. And the the offense that Bobby Slowick runs in Houston, he loves doing his two tight end sets. He actually likes. He prefers to have the uh, you know he uses the fullback. He uses the extra tight end. And so that pulls a wide receiver off the board. So while everybody's like, yeah, 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 Tank Dell, Tank Dell, I'm like, "Mm -mm." Dalton Schultz is that security blanket. And I love that that aspect. Um, A fade, a big fade for me also, Cole Komet. I'm out on Cole Komet. Okay. Um, you know, you've got DJ Moore, you bring in Keenan Allen, you draft Romo Dunze. Um, you've got a pass catching back in Deandre Swift. Maybe if he like, you know, I don't know. I'm not a big Swift guy, but <laughs> you know, but it just, it, what, what it looks like for me in, in, uh, in Chicago is that they're not really as bullish on throwing. They're not going to be as bullish throwing to the tight end, you know, Komet will still get those, mm-hmm. you know, occasional games where he'll get the touchdown or he'll get, you know, like the extra red zone look, but you know, I really feel like they're grooming Caleb Williams and, you know, to have this, you know, booming receiving core. So, you know, Komet definitely on, on my fade list this year. So one guy, you kind of mentioned him. He just, maybe I'm a weenie, but Kyle <laughs> Pitts, Kyle Pitts scares the hell out of me. Oh, just, come on. I know. I know his ceiling just, it's so high. His ADP 70 though, six tight end off the board. I just don't know if I can do it. I don't. I mean, he goes ahead of George Kittle and Evan Ingram. I just, I would, I feel a lot safer taking him. I, I think if you want to take a chance in like the fantasy championship, you want to get these boom picks. I'm fine with going pits, but I just don't know if I can do it. I just, he scares me. I, 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 I mean, maybe you can play devil's advocate. You tell me, you tell me why Pitts is good at his ADP is 70. Maybe try to convince me. Well, I mean, it's it's tough because obviously, you know, a lot of people are drafting of, on what they want to see as opposed yeah. to what they actually are going to see. But for me in Atlanta, it's contained targets. You've got Drake London, Bijan Robinson, and Kyle Pitts. I mean, are you going to splash in? I don't know, Darnell Mooney. <laughs> um, I, you know exactly, right? There's like yeah. there's nobody else there. So when you think about how they're going to kind of you know set up the the game plan. Uh, and what Zach Robinson wants to do offensively, it's really you're, you've got Drake London, you've got Kyle Pitts, and you've got Bijan Robinson. Everybody else is so fringe. So I think, you know, you're going to kind of, you're going to see some decent volume Kyle Pitts' direction as opposed to, you know, George Kittle, who like, you know, who, who lives off of chunk yardage plays. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, he doesn't see the target share that you'd like him to see, but you know, he'll bust out this, you know, 40 yard touchdown catch or just a regular 30 or 40 yard gain. Uh, and he'll work that way. I think Kyle Pitts, you'll get a little bit more volume, uh, utilize him in PPR because really where else is Kirk cousins going to go with the football? It's very true. Very true. That's a good, good, uh, good points on kids. Uh, Pitts. I'm still think I'm out on him, but Oh, I can't wait to I draft with see, you then. I'll just keep I know. <laughs> I can see why people are going to take him. The, the upside is just ginormous. So you teased, we teased it a little bit about a deep sleeper. So if there's somebody late in the draft, maybe you get a good tight end. You feel good about your starter. You want to take a chance on somebody later. Give me a guy. I, I think I have a guy that maybe you might pick. I hope not. But Oh, no, no. Okay. Dude, you go first then. Okay. I'm going with your Jets guy, Ty Conklin. I like Conklin Mm -hmm. 58 receptions each. He has at least 58 catches each of the last three seasons. He was 18th in fantasy tight end scoring. You know what? He didn't score a touchdown and he was 18th in scoring. You get Aaron Rodgers in the mix. I think it's going to help him. You're already hearing reports kind of in many camps. He was a favorite target of Rodgers. I mean, outside of Garrett Wilson, they don't have much in my opinion. Uh, Mike Williams. I know he's there, but off injured who knows what's going to happen with him i think conklin could be a good target good red zone target i like getting them late you can get them super cheap as well so he's kind of one of my late round gambles who do you got um i i I do like conklin but as a jets fan as you can see i I have a very difficult time just picking them uh you know all together so um for me i've got two guys who i i think are are intriguing deep sleepers number one is johnu smith 
Okay. Because you know the offense that Mike McDaniel runs in in Miami. And once you get past Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle, there's very limited targets that you're you're you know that that you can appreciate using. What, is Cedric Wilson still there? <laughs> I, I don't even know who the the wide receiver three is going to be over there. So Jonu Smith, I mean Mike McDaniel, he runs that exact same offense that he ran in San Francisco with Kyle Shanahan. So I'm not going to say that Jonu Smith is the next George Kittle, but I do think they're going to end up utilizing him a little bit more, uh, you know, in this game plan, just based on the fact that you know, he could be the third most targeted pass catcher there. So that's a deep sleeper. Again, I'm with you. It's Kincaid. And then, you know, okay, I can take some chances there. So John who's one of them. The other guy is Greg Dulcich, Um, you know, and, and I tell you what, I know injuries have been an absolute brutal thing for Greg Dulcich, but um, he has some speed. He's got good hands. He can run routes well. Uh, And then when you're also, when you're looking at that target share, that of, of what they're doing, you know, um, we saw what, what, you know, Sean Payton and Joe Lombardi did in new Orleans together with Jimmy Graham, right. He played that Joker role basically, Mm -hmm. which, you know, it was like that hybrid wide receiver tight end. We'll just kind of throw them out there. And as soon as we get a mismatch in coverage, you know, when they try to throw some like, you know, little tiny slot corner on them, then we're going to, you know, we're going to hit them there. So, you know, you've got Cortland Sutton on one side. Jerry Judy's gone. I do not believe in Marvin Mims one bit. Um, Same way. You know, oh, see, thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> How many people? I'm like, I'm like taking haymakers left and right from the Marvin Mims truthers out there. So, you know, I think Dulcich, as long as he stays healthy, and again, you got to look at this as, you know, injury agnostic, but I mean, he's a free pick, 14th round. 15th round i'll take a shot at that as my as my second tight end sure i just took him in the scott fishbowl as my third tight end why not i mean scott fishbowl you get more points more points for uh, tight ends as well so i'm like you i think it's all about opportunity with a lot of these guys and dulcich has a great he's in a great spot to get targets so i I think that's a great call on him for sure. I mean, that's what you're looking for in a, yeah. in a, in a fantasy tight end. You want him to be second or third on the team in targets. If that is the case, then yeah, like you said, opportunity, opportunity trumps talent so much in fantasy football. I think people kind of forget about that. Very true. Let's talk about rookies now real quick uh, before we let you go, Howard. So rookie class used to be tight ends. Rookie tight ends can't do anything. Sam Laporta led fantasy tight ends and scoring last year as a rookie so we're seeing more and more rookies make huge impacts as a tight end brock bowers is the clear top guy do you, are you targeting him any other tight ends rookie tight ends you like what give me your thoughts no you know that's the funny thing is i'm not really targeting brock bowers i grabbed him in a uh in a in a rookie draft just so i could have a share of him Mm -hmm. but you know again i worry about what's going on there in vegas whether it's aiden o'connell or gardner Minshew. um i mean brock bowers does have the potential of being the number two targeted guy right behind Devonte Adams. It just depends on how you feel about Jacoby Myers and really whether or not he's going to, uh, you know, maintain that role as a uh, as a possession receiver. But you know, yeah, overall, I'm not really that into uh, to Brock Bowers. I think it's just it's just a matter of landing spot for him as opposed to uh, you know anything else. So yeah. um, I look at him. Ben Sinnott has a little bit of a appeal because. He doesn't cost much in drafts, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, he's going, he's going like right around where like Conklin and Dulcich are going. So, you know, I'm okay use, you know, grabbing a guy like Ben Sinnott as like a as a as a backup tight end just to see what happens. I mean, Zach Ertz is aging, and who knows? Maybe you know, Sinnott and Ertz become like BFFs, and Sinnott learns something from him. And then you know, as as soon as Washington yeah. starts to try and phase him out a little bit, because I think Sinnott fits the. Uh, you know, Kingsbury scheme a little bit, you know, as well as Zach Ertz when Kingsbury had Ertz in, uh, in Arizona, right? Like, I mean, it was, it was okay. It was, uh, it was, it was decent, but I think Senate just as a younger, more reliable, healthier guy, uh, could be somebody to look at, but again, just by week filler for me, it's not a guy who I'm looking to lock in as my top guy. I'm the same way with my pick. I, I'm like you with Bowers. I, I don't I don't like the situation. I don't like the QBs. 
uh, there in Las Vegas. So I'm kind of out on him, especially for the price tag. So kind of like Senate, I have Jatavion Sanders as a guy I'm kind of maybe Ooh. taking some late gambles on. I mean, he has Tommy Tremble to compete with the start. He's not much of a blocker, but he's a good pass catcher. Again, opportunity. I know they added some people in Carolina, but uh, I think young quarterbacks, you kind of mentioned this with Daniels and Sinnott, I think they like to look at the tight end, kind of that safety net. So maybe Sanders emerges as a top uh, target there for Bryce Young this year. So that's one guy I might take a late round gamble on, especially in a, a deeper format. So Jatavion Sanders is my rookie that I'm kind of looking at this year. I like that. I like that. All right, Howard, this is great stuff. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot of these videos throughout the season, but I really appreciate you coming on. It's going to be a lot of fun working with you this year here at Real Time Fantasy Sports, and I appreciate you sharing your tight end knowledge today. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Jeff. I'm Yeah, like I said, I'm very much looking forward to an outstanding season working together, uh, and let's just crush it, right? I mean, just bring I championships and titles and money and everything into the RT Sports family and just make it all happen. I'm ready. Sounds like a plan. Appreciate it, Howard. All right. I appreciate everybody out there watching this video today, getting you ready for your fantasy football season. That was the fantasy tight end preview. We look forward to bringing you a lot more videos throughout the coming season. This has been Jeff Power with Real-Time Fantasy Sports. Have a great day.